one second it was daylight, the next second everything went black and a really nasty vice-like pressure crushing my chest and upper back. And I wasn't really sure what had actually happened to me. The shark has taken one supersized bite. Eric's head and shoulders are in its mouth. One arm is down its throat. Inside the jaws, I couldn't see any light. It was just all dark there because I was facing the back of his throat. My right arm was actually hanging down the shark's throat. My arm refused to work anymore. A great white shark has half swallowed abalone fisherman Eric Neeras. All that's saving him from certain death is his lead diving vest. My instinct kicked in and I had a free left hand and I started to feel around the jawline of the shark and I reached up higher and I felt a slimy membrane. I realized that must have been the eye. Eric gouges his fingers deep into the shark's eye. Anything we can do that demonstrates to the shark that we're big and strong and are willing to fight back is a good thing. Surprised by the counterattack, the shark begins to loosen its hold. And I started to wriggle out backwards a bit, and I wasn't sure if I was going to get out or not. And just as I thought I was going to be free, the bottom jaw closed, and I felt these teeth going into the back of my head, into my skull. I just thought I'd been hit by a boat. The fear that a predator instills in its prey is it's, it's bottomless. No matter how fast you move, if a crocodile's head is half a metre from you and it strikes, you cannot possibly get away. Jane can't quite make out what's going on. And it all happened within a matter of split seconds. I remember staring at that bit of water going, did I just see what I saw, or is that my imagination? The crocodile clamps down on Jeff's head. And I've become aware of this pressure on my head, this, this, this crushing pressure on my head. Jane starts the boat to stop it drifting. She has absolutely no idea that her husband below is being drowned by a giant croc. I can feel by my neck muscles that he's pulling me down to the sea floor by, by my head. Jeff knows he can't stay under for more than a couple of minutes. I'm trying to stop what's going on, but I, I can't. He, he's, he's just too big, too strong. I remember kicking madly with my fins. You're just in overload. I don't know if it's adrenaline or what, it's all your senses trying to work overtime to save you. I was just squeezing the trigger when... The shark's massive jaws clamp around Rodney's chest. It begins thrashing him violently. White sharks often engage in the marine version of shock and awe. Nothing is better as a predator than to have a sudden strike of overpowering strength to put your prey item in trouble. But then, a violent jolt. He's still attached to the float, and the shark dives and pulls him under. Put my hand on my stomach, trying to find the catch, but it must have swung all the way around. I couldn't find it. Rodney is quickly running out of oxygen. He can't hold his breath any longer. Those were the last few seconds that I was going to have of my whole life. And that's when the gator moves in. All of a sudden, something clicked at the alligator and says, I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. Searing pain shoots through Ike. The horrific force, the slamming effect, the excruciating pain, and I knew it was going to be life or death. Like a sledgehammer, 
the gator's jaws slam down on his shoulder with 2,000 pounds of pressure. Ike sees his left shoulder disappear into the gator's jaws. One quick spin, and his arm could be ripped right off. I couldn't bring my arm back to me, so I thought I had already lost my arm. Ike stares right into the eye of a monster. That big, lifeless, dead eye, that look, that eye was right here. I tried getting up and going for the bank. Incredibly, he crawls towards shore with the alligator still latched onto his shoulder. He had such size and girth, he just drug me right back down again. An alligator will try and get the, the victim off balance, trying to drag them out to deeper water. And once it's drowned, then they will dine on it at their leisure. I worked my hand around his snout. I was able to turn into him. My shoulder is as far back into his jaw as it can go. Ike jams his thumb in the reptile's eye. The most vulnerable part of an alligator is probably its eyes. Uh, everything else is pretty well protected. But the move barely phases the gator. Well, an alligator might expect to have slight pressure to its eye if it, if it grabs a, a large prey item. Ike could be seconds from dying. He reaches back with everything he's got. That's when I stuck my thumb as far back into his eye and is down as far as I could. The move stuns the gator. But then when he went further in, this was something that was totally unexpected by the alligator. He just went ballistic. The bite got worse, and that's when he tried to roll me. They will uh, grab a hold of an appendage and then spin in the water to try and get that appendage uh, torn off. He's in so much pain, Ike can't keep his thumb in the gator's eye socket. It nailed uh, Felt like a linebacker getting run over by a fullback. He just freight trained me. He hit me and knocked me out of the water. A classic bump and bite attack. The shark was getting a feel for uh, the size and the power of whatever it was going to bite. And even though I hadn't seen it, I knew exactly what it was. I felt like he knew that I was out there in his territory, and he wasn't very happy about it. My big fear was that there was more than one. There was a school of sharks, and that I was in real trouble. And just instinctively, I threw my hands out to push off of him. Chuck's move is disastrous. Took all four fingers off my right hand, just clean as a whistle. White knuckles were showing through. I mean, they were literally exposed. The whole shark is probably one of the most powerful biters. Its head is extremely big and robust. It has huge muscles, jaw muscles. It's a very strong predator in terms of its jaw morphology. Ah! Undoubtedly, the shark just missed. I'm sure the shark would have much rather had um, the entire lower arm if it could have grabbed it. The taste of flesh sends the animal's killer instincts into overdrive. This time, he's determined to get a bigger bite. I thought, he's not going to just swim off. There's blood here. He's taking a bite of me. He's going to keep coming back. I realized I'm not going to survive. Likely, it's the same rogue hippo. From underwater, he surfaced like a giant torpedo and knocked Evans clear out of the boat. Paul watches in horror as the current drags Evans away. Evans went under and then popped up again. Paul paddles full speed towards Evans. I turn my canoe around, so I'm going backwards, so I'm between whatever's there and him. 
I back in to try to rescue him. Paul reached for him with a paddle, shouting to him to grab the paddle so that he could pull him out. I'm probably four or five feet away from him when I see this, this bow wave cruising in towards me. And it was at that point where the hippo just erupted next to Paul. While he's trying to help his friend, the hippo turns on Paul and attacks. Just all hell broke loose. The hippo just closed its jaws on his upper torso and pulled him off the boat. The hippo tries to swallow Paul whole. Paul is kicking and clawing for his life. He needs to get out from the mouth of the beast. Evans also needs urgent help. He's in danger of drowning in the strong currents. There's nothing fellow guide Mike can do. We couldn't get to Evans because the hippo was in the way. Finally, Paul's aggressive struggling pays off. Pushed, pulled. At one point, the monster loosened his grip long enough for me to escape. I just sucked in a lung full of fresh air, and I came face to face with Evans. But Evans doesn't look right at all. I got the sense that, that all was not well. He wasn't going anywhere. I think terror and panic had quite literally overwhelmed him. For Evans, it's too late. He's drowned in the strong current. He literally just rolled his eyes up and he sank and he was dead. This time, the hippo is clamped down on Paul's legs, tearing into skin and bones. The hippo started the attack and was not going to finish the aggressive behavior until the intruders were gone. It happened very quickly, and you could see that it was a serious attack, that it was, there was going to be some serious injuries out of this. They don't just try to win, they try to destroy their opponent. One of the clients watching later said that it was like watching a vicious dog, literally just trying to rip apart a rag dog. These huge tusks tearing through my torso as he, as he drove me underwater. So I had tusks going through me every which way but loose. He bit down so hard that I thought for sure he was going to bite me in half.